All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is my most requested of the modes, Mixolydian or Dominant 7. I'm going to do this basically as how to solo over Dominant 7 chords and what you should be looking for and what's coming. I know I left out Locrian, but it's so small, I'm just going to add it into this video. So here we go. Let's do it. When we are talking about dominant seven or mixolydian, we're talking about the fifth mode of the Ionian major scale, but I don't like to look at it like that at all. It is not a very efficient way of doing this. I will go back and forth in this video because it'll make more sense if I do it that way. The more efficient way to do this is in the order of flats. If you look at a key signature, you notice that the first flat is a B flat, E flat, A flat, that moves in fourths, Fourths is more relevant to us as jazz musicians. Okay, so if we were to start this in the key of F with no sharps and no flats, the first mode that we have is Lydian. So in the key of F, no sharps and no flats, F to F, Lydian. Then from Lydian, we add our first flat, which would be the first flat you'd add to the key signature, which would be a B flat that gives us Ionian, and then we'd go to E flat of a perfect fourth, giving us Mixolydian. Okay, so Mixolydian is third in the order of flats. It's important to understand it this way, but we're so ingrained in seeing C as our base template. I'm going to just kind of go back and forth with whichever one is just easier to explain. Okay, if I'm a professor in a college, the first thing you're going to do is learn your Mixolydian scale. You're going to learn your dominant seven scale. That's going to actually replace your Ionian major scales. We learn it mostly for technique and because so much of the music that we play reflects the Ionian mode. But it's not really the case in jazz, funk, and blues. It's actually Mixolydian mode. Mixolydian mode is actually one. That's our one chord. Right? So in the, if we were in the key of C, we would just have a B flat. So if we have the key of C, our C would primarily be a dominant seven. You ever wonder why singers like Whitney Houston singing the national anthem or Ray Charles singing Georgia? These are major songs, but they sing this blues thing over it because it's more heavily reflecting the sound of Mixolydian more than Ionian. And I wish people would really start to teach it from that perspective. In jazz, blues, rock, funk, we have a tendency to lower against the standard that helps to establish that sound. All right. It's very important if you're trying to transcribe a pop vocalist or some type of vocalist that's using these bluesy modes, this bluesy sound over major stuff. Because you look at the chord and go, that's a major seven, but man, why does that, why does that flat seven sound so good? Why does that minor third or sharp nine sound so good over it? Okay, so let me hope to explain a little bit of that right now, talking about the power of mixolydian or the dominant seven sound. Okay. Dominant seven is by far the most versatile chord ever because we can make it sound like the other modes. I'm going to show you how much of a chameleon the dominant seven chord is by superimposing the other modes on top of the dominant seven sound. Now, in case of Ionian, Ionian gets kicked out because it has a major seven. But we need a flat seven. So let's start with Lydian. We have a sharp 11. We have what we call a Lydian dominant. So that Lydian is replaced by a Lydian dominant. In the case of Dorian, and remember Ionian gets kicked out. That gets replaced by Mixolydian. Then we move to Dorian. So let's do this like we're in the key of C. Now we have Dorian minor. We would have an E flat and a B flat, but we're going to make it dominant. And how can we get an E flat in there? So we can look at that E flat like it's a sharp nine. And then we have our flat seven. Now, Dorian 
is very, very important. This is our first level funk mode. And with that, we have this floating ninth. It's either a sharp nine or a natural nine. Let's take this very popular song by James Brown. Listen. Let's take a look at um, I Feel Good by um, James Brown. And remember what I said about Whitney Houston about lowering against the standard. So it's a C9, C dominant seven with a ninth. <laughs> It's not a sharp nine chord, it's just a regular C9, but we are superimposing that sharp nine with the natural nine on this dominant seven chord. That is the power of Dorian superimposed over Mixolydian this way. Okay, so I also want you to think about pentatonic being like a light blues versus our actual blues. So a pentatonic would be a minor pentatonic versus a regular blues. In the same way we have a half diminished and a fully diminished, we can think of ourselves as having a, a light blues versus like a full blues or whole blues. So a minor pentatonic would be like a light blues. Versus a full blues. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Next up would be Aeolian. So we'd add a flat six or a flat 13. A flat 13 is not a sharp five. A flat 13 is telling your bass player to play a natural five in its bass line. All right, that's, that's really it. So in general, you generally tend to omit the natural fifth. If the fifth is altered in some way, then as a comping, a comping instrument, then you would definitely want to voice it. But when in doubt, omit the natural five okay now this is the full funk if the dorian superposition over the dominant seven is the light funk this one can definitely be the dark funk like the full-on funk mode okay okay so let's move on to phrygian where you basically have a flat nine sharp nine flat 13 and a flat seven, all right? And then you'd have your Locrian superposition, which would be flat nine, sharp nine, flat five, flat 13, and flat seven. So these are only just a few ways of altering dominant seven chords. I haven't talked about sharp four or sharp 11, flat nine, 13, or flat, I haven't even gotten into that yet because it's so extraordinarily diverse. Utilizing augmented, utilizing diminished over your dominant seven. Okay, so let's start with a flat nine. Generally, this implies some type of diminished so if we have a C7 flat nine chord, we have C, E, G, B flat, D flat. So if you spell it just from the E, it spells out a diminished chord. So here's your C7 flat nine. Spell it from the E. All right, so we have this tritone. We have this type of parallel tritone thing going on here. So this chord can resolve in many, many ways. So let me show you some of the ways that you can utilize when you have this type of geometric shape of minor thirds, or you basically have flat sevens 
and major thirds alternating in this way. So the E in the B flat, that can be a C7 or it can be an F sharp 7. And the G in the D flat can be an A7 or it can be an E flat 7. So if we just use a diminished chord, a diminished chord can move in a lot of different places. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. See ya!